Hello, good evening and welcome to News at 10 on TV3, live from our studio here at Adesanwe in Accra. I am Martin Lesidu Dato. This bulletin is also live on our website, 3news.com. We're going straight to the headlines that we have for you this evening. And um, all government uh, agents, former government officials involved in the yet-to-be-completed $200 million Saglami housing deal will soon face criminal prosecution. Government has indicated. Works and Housing Minister Samuel Atachia says there is enough evidence that funds meant for the project were embezzled. But a former deputy minister in the NDC regime is calling his bluff, challenging the basis of the fraud claims. The Supreme Court has ordered the Electoral Commission to offer legal basis for excluding the existing voters' identification card from the new voters' registration exercise, and that information must reach the court by 8th of June. A seven-member panel presided over by the Chief Justice, Justice Enin Yabua, issued the order in a case between the NDC, the Electoral Commission, and the Attorney General. As part of the government's easing of restrictions, the food and beverage sector, tour, event managers and other hospitality facilities under the tourism industry are to operate under strict adherence to safety protocols as restrictions are eased on their operations. Nightclubs and bars, however, remain shut. Our tourism and Creative Arts Minister Barbara Otingisi said operators who fail to adhere to these safety protocols would be sanctioned. All right, so those are the local headlines that we have for you. Let's find out what's happening elsewhere around the world. And uh, we're going straight to the United States of America, where a memorial service uh, took place to commemorate Judge Floyd, uh, who was, um, it was held in Minneapolis, the city where he was killed, um, by, in the hands of police. Reverend Al Sharpton, who addressed the service, uh, challenged the idea of what makes America great and how the country has never been great for blacks and never was great for Latinos and other minorities in the United States of America. Now, the African Union has started an ambitious initiative to increase testing of coronavirus across the continent. The aim is to take the total number of tests down up to 10 million over the next two to three months. To date, more than 160,000 cases have been confirmed in Africa with 4,600 people losing their lives to the virus. Uh, in Iran, the country has reported a record daily increase in the number of coronavirus cases, stoking fears of a second wave in the Middle East's biggest outbreak. The health ministry said 3,574 new COVID-19 infections were recorded on Wednesday, the third consecutive day that the figure has exceeded 3,000. So those are the major local and international stories that we have for you. This is your election command center. We have the election stories coming up shortly. We're going straight to the Supreme Court now. The Supreme Court has ordered the Electoral Commission to offer legal basis and explain why it excluded the existing voter's identification card from the exercise where persons need to use the different identification to register. And that information must reach the court by the 8th of June. A seven-member panel presided over by the Chief Justice, Justice Enin Yabwa, issued the order in a case between the NDC, the Electoral Commission, and the Attorney General. 
The court, after the order, told the plaintiff it is free to file a legal argument after the second defendant, the Electoral Commission, files its legal basis. The National Democratic Congress, NDC, sued the Electoral Commission over its decision to compile a fresh voters' register. The NDC is seeking a declaration that, upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 45A of the 1992 Constitution, the second defendant has the constitutional power to and can compile a register of voters only once and thereafter revise it periodically as may be determined by law. Accordingly, the second defendant can only revise the existing register of voters and lacks the power to prepare a fresh register of voters for the conduct of the December presidential and parliamentary elections, or in the alternative, a declaration that upon a true and proper interpretation of the provisions of the constitution, specifically Article 51 read conjointly with Article 42 of the Constitution, the power of the second defendant to compile and review the voters' register must be exercised subject to respect for and the protection of the right to vote. The NDC has since insisted that there is no need to compile a new voters' rule, but the Commission says the current voters' register and its management system and biometric verification devices cannot deliver a credible election. Representing the parties are Godwin Tamaklo for the NDC, the EC represented by Justin Amenuvo, and Godfrey Yebo Adame representing the Attorney General. On the panel were the Chief Justice, Justice Enin Yabua, Justice Victor Jones Doche, Justice Paul Bafuboni, Justice Sule Gbadegbe, Justice Samuel Mafusao, Justice Ashikote, and Justice Nene Ofui Amagache. The case has been adjourned to June 11. Godfrey Tanam, TV3 News, Accra. All right, so let's stay on this subject matter a while longer and find out whether or not this is going to slow down, further slow down the work of the Electoral Commission. Let's go to Skype now and speak to a political um, analyst, and he's in the person of Jonathan Asante Ochri. Actually, joined us has joined us via Zoom. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your time. Yeah, good evening. All right, to start with, the Electoral Commission is already hard pressed for time, and with this new directive coming in from the Supreme Court. How much of a pressure do you think this is going to be putting on the EC? Well, uh, good evening, Martin, once again, and good evening to you know, our viewers. I think that um, it is always better late than never. We always need to get the right things done so that we don't see something else tomorrow. And I think that is the right way to go. And so I wouldn't say that uh, the, the activities of the EC more or less will, will be delayed. I don't think so. Uh, but um, should it happen that uh, <clears throat> the declaration of the Supreme Court should go the way of the plaintiff, then probably a lot of things you know, will have to change. Right. Uh, I would be happy if you can speak up a little bit. Uh, your, your voice is quite faint there. Uh, while you, we try to okay. work on that, we know that... Um, the Supreme Court is asking the EC to bring that reason, the justification for excluding the current voters' ID card we all have from the exercise, and that should reach them by June 8th. That's in about four days. And looking at that, plus all the other works that the Electoral Commission has to do, do you believe, and with what people are already saying, that this is going to further slow down the work of the Electoral Commission? Yeah, Martin, I think... Um the idea of uh, the NDC going to court is in order. Uh, as to whether it is likely to delay the, the work of the EC is a possibility. But as I said earlier, we need to get things right because what the EC intends to do, some of us, you know, we've already voiced our grievances on that. Some of us think that it is quite imprudent um, and the timing is, is, is very wrong. Uh, some of us do not really appreciate the way EC is conducting itself. Uh, we've said it over and over again. I think that EC is becoming more or less like a broken record. And so if the biggest opposition party in the country has decided to take them to the Supreme Court, the, the highest apex you know, of the court system in our country, I think it is in order. And so the basis for, the, for that particular exclusion of the voters' ID card, that is something that uh, is crucial. And so we need, to, we need to find out from the EC 
as it were, you know, that kind of legal basis. And of course, that basis must be must be based on logic and some kind of soundness. Mm. And so I think that the, the whole job, I think what the, the Supreme Court has done is, is quite is quite in order. Uh, they did not even delay at all. 8th June is just around the corner. Uh, if they took that decision to exclude the, the voter's ID card as part of the breeder, I think that they might have that those reasons you know, compiled. So four days is even long enough for them to be able to defend. If, if the Supreme Court decides otherwise, then probably we'll have to start all over again. Because mm. believe you me, some of us think that it is improper to suggest that you're going to use passport. How many of us do have passports? Even university students don't even, some of them don't even have passports. Mm. Now the NIA card as a breeder is in order, but the timing is equally wrong because they are not done with the process. Therefore, the only source, the main source, should rather be the voter's ID card. But you have given a third option. That third option is a vouching. And I have said that, look, that vouching is, is an avenue for corruption because you know that apart from those who may be guaranteeing for their, for their family, family members, more or less, if it comes to people guaranteeing or vouching for friends, you know, friend, a friend to a friend and other things, you know the Ghanaian nature. It is going to be exploitative. And that will in itself compromise the integrity, the integrity of the register. Already we are saying that the register is an ECOWAS register. Mm. And that is an ISO because, I mean, it, it is an indictment on those that we have elected, i.e. Mm. the president himself. Is the president an ECOWAS president? Our MPs, are they ECOWAS MPs? The, the, the district assembly, people that we've elected, are they ECOWAS, you know? Citizens. And so I think some of these comments, you mm. know, are just below the belt. And so we'll just leave the EC for now. Now that the issue is in court, I think that the NDC they acted responsibly mm. because that is the best way to resolve this. Particular. And finally, if, if, before you leave, and if you can be brief for me on this, what do you think the Supreme Court could do or what is the verdict they will give if the EC brings its um, reasons for taking out the current voters' ID card? Do you believe, like many, that the Supreme Court would say, okay, Based on information we have, your reason is not tangible enough. So accept the current voters' register. And how would that play in the scheme of things? Well, Dr. Kweku has once said that if push comes to show, well, then they will have to fall on the, the old voters' ID card. In fact, we don't even have any new voters' ID card. What we have is the existing voters' ID card, right. which has not expired. So if Dr. Kweku said on joy that some time ago not long about three weeks ago that you know because of corona and other things if the opportunity does not come for them to compile a new register then they would not have any any other option than to fall on that the the existing voters id card but of course they will have to beef it up you know do verification here and there right. so and so forth and that is the way you know to go other than that i mean a country that is hugely indebted to the tune of over 236 billion and we are spending so much in, in such a reckless fashion. Hmm. I mean, what do you think people out there will say about us? We are just simply imprudent. And so we need to be very careful so that tomorrow, when there is a change in government, you, the person who took the decision, the decision you are not found wanted. Because if you take a decision today, you must be ready that should anything change tomorrow, you'll be able to defend that, you see. And so that is where I think that EC must operate their own thing. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Jonathan Asantiotri is a political science um, analyst and uh, helping us uh, try to make sense of the current development regarding the new register, uh, the register that the EC wants to put together. The latest is that the Supreme Court says for taking the current voter ID card out of the identifications we have to take there to be verified and to be registered, they should come and explain it to the Supreme Court by June 8th. We will keep you posted on that development. This is uh, News at 10 on TV3, your election command center. Stay with us. When we return, one other big story that broke today is the fact that the current housing minister says that all former government officials who played a part in the Saglami housing project are likely to go to jail or face the, the court. We'll tell you more when we return. Stay with us.
Thank you for staying with TV3. This is News at 10. We're shifting our attention to Parliament now. A all former government officials involved in the yet-to-be-completed $200 million Saglemi housing deal will soon face criminal prosecution. That's according to government. The Works and Housing Minister Samuel Atacha says there is enough evidence that funds meant for the project uh, were embezzled. But a former deputy minister in the NDC regime is calling his bluff and challenging the basis of the fraud claims. Million dollar project near completion but stalled for the past three years to allow for a government probe into alleged infractions regarding the execution of the deal. This has become subject of controversy following complaints of abandonment. Wax and Housing Minister Samuel Atacha says despite the states paying more than 90 percent of the contract sum former government officials unilaterally variated the contract without recourse to parliament bring the bonus of the evidence to show the extent of the theft that is what it is but if anybody does not see this as a theft it's up to him but at the appropriate time those people who are involved in this racket will be invited to come and answer you could take 40 million united states dollars of the contract sum abroad and there's no return of um, importation of materials to do the job. These are matters which should be obvious to everybody. We are working. But let me tell you something that Kufuwa don't do. He won't do which hand. Do you know what which hand is? Let's go after this man, whether there is evidence or not. We are not going to go into that kind of chief I mean, uh, politics. Answering questions from MPs on the state of the housing project, the minister argued the contract entered into by the previous administration defies logic. Yeah, the Attorney General is saying that, for instance, what Collins at that date was ultra virus his powers, he didn't have the requisite power to overrule parliamentary approvals, and that the consequent um, tinkering of that document is null and void and is of no consequence. And all the chief directors who purported to have downsized the contracts, they are in acts of illegality. It's stated clearly. And also the contract has lapsed. That was a clear position of the Attorney General. And they are unable to complete the contract within the defined time. Disputing the claims, former Deputy Minister of Works and Housing, Samson Ahim, has described the Minister's claims as false and unimaginable. He said this three years ago, that they were taking the, those corporates to court. Three years ago that he said it. Oh, you know, in the country, last year, he generated heated discussions in the country. We have been waiting for when that court matter will, will start. Now he's ready. Huh? Now he says he's ready. Everybody is also ready to respond because we didn't do anything on top of In March 2017, Atatia was the minister for West and Housing. Under his watch, and that payment was made in March 2017. It was Kwanzaa, a minister, of, a minister of Western Housing, in 2017. He didn't sanction. So how was the money paid? Can you move to the Western Housing Ministry and then approve a certificate to be paid? Chief Director, okay. Then you should, you should explain. If you are a minister, and then you sit down there for the Chief Director to be signing, approving a, a, a certificate without your knowledge, he shouldn't insult himself. We wait to see how that pans out in the coming days. Now, a think tank, the Research Center for Policy Advocacy and Governance, says its findings in the health sector suggest that government's over-concentration on COVID-19 is affecting the treatment of cerebrospinal meningitis, which is CSM. At a news conference in Accra, the think tank called on government to immediately set up a CSM fund to resource players in the health sector to avert death in CSM prone areas. Health Service released a statement outlining response measures it intended to activate towards the management of the outbreak of CSM in the Upper West and its regions. This was after reports suggested that persons suffering from CSM were neglected as government concentrated on COVID-19 pandemic. The Research Center for Policy Advocacy and Governance says after a visit by officials of the Ghana Health Service to CSM-prone areas, no effective intervention has been made especially with respect to the public education and mitigation against late reporting to health facilities. 
we wish to also register our displeasure over the over-concentration of Ghana Health Service, Ministry of Health, and for that matter, government on COVID-19 to the neglect of cerebral spinal, meningitis, and other communicable diseases, which is silently killing Ghanaians. Executive Director of the Think Tank, Mumuni Bliva Lekpalmo, said people in the CSM prone areas are more concerned about the disease than COVID-19. Our interaction with residents of Upper West and East regions revealed that they are rather afraid of CSM to COVID-19. This revelation goes to emphasize the trepidation with which people in northern Ghana regard the CSM menace, which has become an annual ritual in that part of the country. He urged government to make it a priority to establish disease control centers in each of the meningitis-prone regions and invest in research into the sequence genome and mutation of the new strain of meningitis and other diseases. Our research revealed that part in partnership with Serum Institute of India, is currently conducting a phase two clinical trial of a multivalent meningococcal vaccine that covers the new strain. We therefore encourage government to partner with them and leverage that trials to enable us secure the vaccine after it has been successfully lanced. He added government must develop a national response document which will spell out their preparations at the pre-epidemic phase, the epidemic stage activities and, and post-epidemic measures seasonally to help manage the disease. For staying with us and that's how we bring the bulletin to a close. I am Martin Esiridati. Do have a good evening and as always, stay positive.